Another one, I will say like, this doesn't happen that often. Um, it's such a well-oiled machine, uh, Phantom of the Opera and our production especially. And uh, so not, not stuff, not a lot of stuff happens, but um, and one of my other favorite ones um, was during the time when, when Megan Paterno was here, we were doing the, um, the dressing room scene and I just told her I was gonna go get my hat. So I go to get my hat and I come back and I, and I'm like, the first thing I do is I try to go into the dressing room again. And cause I'm like, let's go out for dinner. And, uh, I went to touch the door handle and it fell off in my hands. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'm supposed to, uh, be like m m increasingly more frustrated in the fact that she's not answering and the door's locked and I can hear a voice in there. And so, um, normally it's like a progression of increasingly like louder knocks but knowing that there's nothing holding the door closed anymore i literally had to just be like <laughs> just like tap 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 <laughs> and uh, so anyway and then i had to like, i couldn't just like leave the door handle anywhere so i i had it in my hand put it in my hat and then i'm like christine angel so um yeah those are the the two ones that come to mind um uh, costume department wouldn't love to hear this or, or wigs but we do love a a wig or costume malfunction. It just keeps it fresh and interesting and keeps us present. So, um, yeah, I, I live for any crazy onstage moment. And I feel like there's, there's been more. I really should keep a list. I really should. Um, cause I know I would get a kick out of it. Anyway, um, let's see. How long have you been in the acting industry? Oh God, a long time, <laughs> but I love it. I wouldn't do anything else. Are you an angel without wings? You're so kind. Oh, that means so much to me. Um, one of the, the best things about doing Phantom is uh, not only getting the lovely like notes and messages from fans about what I do in the show, but like I think something that means more to me is is hearing that I've that like I know you enjoy me as a as a person or like. I've helped you get through a dark time or, um, the show has, or yeah. So that's been a real treat. Um, cause I try to be the best person I can be. And so I don't know anyone who thinks I'm helping them out or, or making them happy or laugh or smile that, that means I've done my job. So I'm very happy to, to do that. What? Oh, uh, oh. There's the sirens, hopefully nothing bad is happening. Um, yeah, so um, let's see next. What made you a musical actor? Uh, I always sang, and this is how it all began. And uh, I, um, oh, the phone's going. Let's see. <laughs> let's see, I always sang, and I was in the American Boy Choir, and it's a professional boy choir that actually has ceased to exist in the last few years. Um, but it was an amazing experience where I got to perform all over the world and it was a school as well. So like we had three choirs, a training choir and two touring choirs. And we spent, um, all, like it's middle school. So I'm like fifth to eighth grade and it was a boarding school. I actually was a day student. It was in Princeton, New Jersey is where the school was. And uh, yeah, we, we toured all over the world and made amazing recordings, got to perform in amazing halls. And um, so that's kind of where my performing, uh, my interest in performing really began. And I always sang after that, cause like, that was my thing. Um, and then did a couple musicals in, in high school, but um, it wasn't really until college when I was a, a music major at Northwestern, I was studying to be more of a classical singer. I uh, would go to see all the plays and musicals on campus. And I was like, I really like this. And so I auditioned to be in the musical theater program and it wasn't like I was just accepted with open arms. I kind of got in in the back door and um, worked my way up and I took acting class. And um, the acting class really inspired me and made me realize that what I loved about being on stage was the stories and being on stage with other people. And that is is how I started to get interested in acting. But the funny thing though is, let me take a sip of water is though um, there wasn't a ton of interest in me 
um, for musicals in college. I, uh, I did, I played like leads in plays and then had like one lead in an opera and then a lot of ensemble roles. And I uh, couldn't get cast in the musicals. And I, I, def- I, talk, I went up to the, the guy running the musical theater program and I was like, hey, um, would love to be able to do musical. Um, any like tips? Or... So basically he's like, you can't sing musical theater like you're singing classical music. And so I was like, oh, okay, get that. And then um, so I recorded myself and practiced. And, and it really is, um, for people who are, I don't know if there's anyone listening who is coming more from the classical world, it's funny. Like I think you really think that there are, are like you, you're singing in a musical theater style, but it's a lot, there's a lot more to it. And it takes some time to be able to, because I think it's a lot of different, it's, it's like stylistic. So um, it was like learning how to l- learn the style, vocal stylings and, and stylings of like different types of musical theater music. So um, yeah, so b- finally, by the time I finished school, I kind of figured out how to do musical theater. And then yeah, came to did I actually went to Asia. I don't know if anyone knows this, but um, I my, one of my first jobs out of college was doing sound and music, excuse me, in China and Taiwan, um, and that's when I left. I did six months of the tour and then moved to New York. But uh, but yeah, it was an amazing experience, and um, and so yeah, so I came to the city and started doing a whole bunch of plays and musicals, and um, and then yeah, things started happening for me with musical theater. Like uh, I did Fantastics in New York for three years. Um, and then, um, I did a bunch of, I was thinking like I needed to do, get back to like my roots, like what, what got me so excited about, about theater. And that was a lot, like a lot of great roles in plays. So I did, played some great roles in plays for a couple of years. And then, um, a gentleman's guide to love and murder got me, uh, I went on the first national tour of that. And that was a dream show of mine. And I am so glad I got to have that experience. Um, and that came, got me back to the city. And then, then I, right away I got, um, I started standing by for Sweeney Todd in New York um, for this really cool production. You guys should check it out. Um, it's not happening anymore, but um, you can read up about it. It was a, a production of Sweeney Todd set in a, in a functioning pie shop. It originated from London at Harrington's Pie Shop, which was like an actual pie shop. And um, I mean, for people who know Sweeney Todd, it's uh, it's about um, a guy who seeks vengeance, but um, Mrs. Lovett has this great idea that we can put, we can kill people and because that, that, that helps um, Sweeney and his vengeance um, and revenge. And then we'll put them into pies because um, times is hard, as she says. And uh, so, I mean, how funny is it to literally do Sweeney Todd in and then eat meat pies? So they brought that production to New York and they uh, converted this really cool off-Broadway theater down in the village into a pie shop and it literally looked exactly like maybe a tiny bit bigger version of Harrington's pie shop in in London and it was one of the coolest experiences of my life because it was immersive the audience was up right we were like we did the action around them and among them and it was just such a cool experience done with very minimal props everything all the props we used were things that would exist within a pie shop. So like rolling pins and there was flour and, and uh, yeah, it was just so cool. And we, and silverware, we did choreography with silverware and plates and so cool. And so, yeah. And then from there I auditioned for Phantom of the Opera and for the world tour. And, um, and then before Sweeney closed, I knew I was going to be doing that. So it's, it's been a great stretch of, of musical theater. Um, so who knows what will we'll follow this, but um, I would love to do a play again, but I'm, I'm enjoying this this journey um let's see uh what is the happiest thing during world tour for me i'm i'm an explorer i love to get to a place and and like milk the crap out of it like to see what there is i um i always make a little list of of places not necessarily of places i will go i won't go to all of them but like i always want if I have like a free afternoon, I want to, or free day off, I want to like have some options of things to do. Um, I will say I found on this tour, um, especially during COVID with the, the stresses and anxieties that we faced, even as people working through the pandemic in the industry, it, it was definitely stressful. And I felt there was a lot of self care we had to take care of. So, um, that meant like getting a lot of rest, um, being okay with staying in, and not going out and seeing things, which is kind of goes against what I have 
I'm more inclined to do. Like, I just want to get out and see everything. So um, I think that was a good learning lesson because it's not sustainable. Like, I can't be row for eight shows a week and then, like, spend all my days just running around and, and like, yeah, yeah. Anyway, hard. So, um, so yeah, for me, the, one of the greatest things about the world tour is just getting to see the world. And I, um, pre-COVID... I would spend two weeks after every stint. We had, we had a bunch of breaks in the first year. So I would uh, use that opportunity. So instead of being like home for, for four weeks, because they tended to be like about a month to get the set from country to country. And um, so we'd have like a month off and I would spend two weeks of that after each uh, stint of shows. And I would go to all these places on my bucket list, countries. And I, the first place I went to was um, when we were in the Philippines, I kept hearing about how beautiful the islands were. And uh, actually even before um, going, a fr my friend Danny sent me a, a link to, um, to Palawan. Um, it's basically like, this is uh, an article about the most beautiful place in the world. So um, I was like, well, I have to go to that. So I ended up changing my flight so that I could leave like, I don't know, four days later or something. So I took a, made a little experiment and, um, I got on a plane and had a little like three day adventure, four day adventure with myself. And I found that I loved traveling even on my own. Um, Jesse, one of the, um, our former phantom colleagues happened to be there. And so we overlapped for like a day. So we spent a day together, but, um, and that was great. But I also just realized I really enjoy like traveling by myself. It's a great way to reflect and, um, and really soak up the scenery, soak up the culture. And, um, and I found, I really recommend it if you get the chance. Um, cause it's, it's an interesting energy. Cause like, if you are by yourself, I feel like you attract other people who, I don't know, couples or groups of friends who, I don't know, it's not that they're over each other, but like, they're like, Oh, someone new, you seem cool. And so I found there was a lot of times that I was invited to do things with other people or people engage me in conversation. So I never felt it was like a thing where I was lonely and felt like I was like, Oh, I wish I came with my friend or I wish I had someone special to travel with. Blah, blah. Like I always, I don't think I ever really felt lonely. So um, because of that trip, I came back after, after um, the next stint, I guess that would have been after KL. And then I had, there's a wedding um, that um, I unfortunately missed literally by hours. But, um, but I got to tag up with them in Spain. And so I, one of my, um, my bucket list um, destinations was um, Italy. And so I got to hang out in Barcelona for several days. And then I got to go to like Venice. I think it's where I first went and Venice. And then I went to, did I go to, yeah, Florence, Cinque Terre in Rome. And um, so anyway, so anyway, basically I got to travel a lot. And um, after that, I went to Greece. Um, highly recommend. We were talking about that yesterday. I actually like spent two years of my life in Greece as a baby. So I'm um, getting to hear more stories about that last night was awesome with my parents. Um, and then I think the next time I went to Egypt and Turkey. And then after that, I went to visit my friends in South Africa. And so I went to Cape Town and Johannesburg. And then while I was there, I went to Victoria Falls up in Zimbabwe and Botswana. So I'm um, highly recommend travel. I didn't realize how enjoyable it can be by yourself. And so I know a lot of times it can be difficult coordinating schedules, getting off from work to travel. And um, especially for us performers where we always want to go out and explore, but if we're not working or we don't have something coming up, it seems almost irresponsible to, to not be in the city where, where we would get jobs. Like for me, it's New York. So if I'm not in New York, um, when I'm unemployed in between jobs, it seems kind of like a bad idea to go spend all this money and not be in a place where you can get your next job. So this is like this world tour has afforded me the most amazing opportunity to see the world and not feel guilty about it. Um, yeah, so, but I'm, for me, the best part besides the amazing show and the people and the fans <laughs> has been getting to see the world. So cool. Do you like mint? Love that question. Yes, we have some mint in my, uh, in my parents' back garden. So, um, yeah, I've spent a lot of time enjoying the garden actually until I got bitten alive by, I think they might be chiggers. I don't know if you guys have those, but, um, 
these little tiny bugs that like leave the most annoying like itchy bites that last several days. Um, I prefer a mosquito bite, which is big and kind of goes away in a day or so. But these things, they wake me up at night. But um, I guess it's the price you pay for being in a beautiful place. Um, so yeah, so mint is great. Uh, <laughs> that was a tangent. Um, mint is something we put, went up, up into the garden and pulled some mint for, uh, to put in a, it wasn't a mint julep, but what did we have? We had a, um, God, what is those, those things with the, anyway, um, in the copper mugs. Um, anyway, um, oh, are people still writing? Gosh, I don't know if, let's see. Oh, I think I might've been at the, oh, sorry. Hi, I've been missing all of this. The guilt about traveling. So yes. Um, I realized the, the, um, the feed was all the way at the top. So I wasn't seeing the new stuff yet. Mm hmm. You, yes, I, I, my wish for you guys is that you will have post COVID the ability to travel. Um, oh, what was your happiest? Um, oh, thanks for appreciating the Philippines. Of course, I enjoyed it. Oh, well, I enjoyed sharing my stories with you guys too. Um, Palawan, yes. The sweet, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Love me some Sweeney Todd. Um, oh, thank you for wishing me um, all the best with my family. It's been great. Um, oh, oh, my sister's here. <laughs> Hello, Rachel. Uh, do, 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 do. Can you send me a stream? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll I'll definitely post this afterwards, and then I can uh, <laughs> can see how awkward I am. Um, oh yeah, go cats. Oh, should he skip your class? Oh, I mean, watch this later. Um, go learn <laughs> priorities. How are you doing? Oh, is Ollie watching this? Um. Oh, you guys. Mm. Oh my gosh, this is so, so nice to see all your lovely messages. Oh my gosh. Oh, polite row is the best. I love, it. I love um, a shirt I got on closing in um, Seoul. It said, uh, row so gentle. I was like, oh. Um, yeah, my family enjoyed that too. Uh, do you love these things? Oh, sorry. Hey, yeah, Ollie is here. Hello. I hope you're doing well. Miss you guys. Oh, how are you doing? Um, doing well, thank you. Sorry, this might not be the most exciting as I'm strolling. <laughs> oh, yes, um, mishaps. My sister actually just reminded me of my favorite one. Um, it's captured on Instagram. So uh, scroll down. It actually looks like a blank video. It's from when we were in Dubai. My parents came to see the show for the first time, and it was so, I was so excited for them to see it. And I had a great show. I gave a little extra than I normally do, and including the curtain call. And so uh, I go running because I, uh, for you who have seen the show, what the um, it's so cool. The uh, the ensemble and principals who have already bowed will um, kind of like they'll kind of form these two clumps and then they separate to let me come running from upstage down to center stage. And, uh, it's such a cool, cool way to bow. And, um, I gave a little extra run and I slipped on the phantom sweat, which had fallen from under the mask. And I slipped so hard and just landed on my hands and knees. I, um, I was literally having one of those out of body experiences. You know, when you fall, you're like, did I, did that just happen? Like, how did I end up on the floor? Like what the hell? So um, I was on the floor on my knees and I just like, I was like, what? And so I just immediately kind of became a gymnast. I was like, ta-da. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, like my arms up and, uh, and just laughed my way through curtain call. Um, but yeah, so that, that video exists on Instagram. So thank you, Rachel, for um, reminding me about that. Oh, have you ever tripped? I love it. Yes, Carice. <laughs> oh, thank you. I like to smile. Um, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, this hair, um, Chris, our, our hair supervisor, our hair, um, our wig supervisor is, um, oh my gosh, yeah. He was a little uh, freaked out when he saw how short my hair was. I, uh, once, once I found out I wasn't going to be in the last day of, of performances in Daegu, I was like, I should use this opportunity to go to 
a barber where there are barbers who are open because I wasn't sure back in Kansas City if there was a place that would be able to cut my hair that's open. So, um, and they cut it a little short, but I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it. It's nice. To, it's good for the hot weather. So, uh, thank you. Oh, I love it. Yes. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Any, you guys like go to bed if it's time. Um, I'm so sorry. It's so late. You can see this on, on, um, what is it in the IGTV? Yeah, I'll post it there. Um, do you have any plans? Oh, oh, you guys, I should do this more often. You're just filling me with compliments. Um, oh my gosh. Oh, I love you guys too. Oh, would we need to quarantine in Taiwan too? That is a very good question. Um, we haven't heard yet. Most likely, yes. Especially for us people coming from the U.S. Um, we're not doing so well with COVID here. So um, I would not blame the Taiwanese for being like, anyone coming from the U.S. must do a mandatory two-week quarantine. I would ask for it. Um, this question is good. I'm quarantining. Oh, yes. Yes, um, yeah, to the new chandelier. I'm quarantining with my parents right now, and I'm wearing my mask at all time, all the time. Yeah, uh, I actually, just to be safe, I got myself a rapid COVID test. And um, But until then, until I got the results, I was, um, I guess, self-isolating with my parents. And um, and it's not the biggest house. So like, I'm like, how's this going to work? So we just wore masks and did a lot of wiping down after I touched things. And uh but yeah, luckily that only was a few days because then I got my negative test results. <laughs> so that was good. Um, did you take flu shots and pneumonia shots? Oh, no. I got a flu shot earlier. Like, um, but I don't know. I guess it'll be time to get a flu shot. You know, it's becoming fall again. Um, oh, yes. I think we might be staying in Asia post-Taiwan. Just to give you a little teaser. Oh, I want to come back to Malaysia. That would be lovely. Hong Kong would be cool. Um, what was your favorite Korean drink while you were staying here? Oh, yeah. Um, one thing that, like, re- a surprising drink was makgeolli. Um, Ian, in the cast, um, he's spent a lot of time in Korea and, and is currently living there. And uh, he took us out a couple times for um, makgeolli nights where we would have Korean pancakes with it, which I love. Like the scallions, especially the ones with shrimp in them. I love those. So, and I think it pairs really well with makgeolli. So that was like a surprising, for people who don't know, it's like, I don't even know what category you would, you would put it in, but I guess like in between beer and wine, but it's milky and somewhat carbonated. It sounds disgusting, but it's really good. And I recommend it. Um, what are your favorite? Oh, oh yeah, I got that. Oh, my eyes are shining. Oh, thank you. Got some, uh, some good lighting coming in. Um, oh, oh, yeah, you're in a dorm and you can't sing. Yes, I know, uh, yeah, I know the feeling. So I gotta, gotta wait. Um, I can, oh, you guys. All right, let's get, let's get another question. Um, what makes you smile and what makes you cringe? Um, right now, it's, uh, my little nephew, he's, uh, he has, he's so fun right now. I mean, he's always been fun, but he's just so inquisitive and, and interested and curious. And, and so he makes me smile and he's got the greatest little um, devilish smile. He's, I think he's a little bit of an imp, a little, uh, maybe he's going to be a little bit mischievous as he grows up. But, um, but I, I can relate to that. And, and seeing his big old smile and his sense of wonder when seeing new things is amazing. We went to... Um, this sunflower farm, I posted a photo of that, and uh, he loves sunflowers, and, and just seeing him in a field of sunflowers that are taller than him was really cool. Um, and then the thing that makes you cringe right now is, um, is the person who is the president of our country. Yes. Please get him out. Um, let's see. Um, what do you think has changed about your interpretation of Rao since the first show? I mean... I feel like if anything, I don't think much has changed per se as opposed to I, I've grown. So I've grown in the role. Um, I have deepened my understanding of him, deepened my um, relationship with the other characters and made things more specific. So um, that's like the joy of doing a long run is that um, your work can only get deeper and deeper. So I'm finding new things and just in living in the moment. 
Um, cause I find that the freer I am on stage, uh, is when I have the more, I have more aha moments, more aha moments, kind of like, oh, that's why he does this, or that's why this character does this, or like in the sequence of the story, like this happens and then this happens and, and you're doing this because of this. And so I don't know, it's, um, I'm finding, yeah, like that, that when I'm loose on stage is when I have more moments to, to have realizations and, and be like, yes, this helps my character. Um, out of all the characters you have played, which one resonates with you the most? That's so interesting, because I feel like with roles, um, we're tapping into a part of ourselves with each one we play. So I feel like it, it, um, it won't happen very often for you to play a role that's like you, like 100% you. So like they're all be like, like Rao is, um, I am tapping into the romantic part of me, which is definitely there. Um, and then I get to use part of me that um, I don't actually access a lot, which is the more brave, heroic um, part of me. And because um, we, I feel like it's hard to act something that we're comp like we're not at all. Like it's it's hard to be like I feel like we're just using what we can bring to the role, um, and that's how we are good actors. Um, it's what we bring to the table, and and how and the similarities between us and the character. And um, so, yeah, actually, another question I think I saw earlier was, um, uh, was what have you learned from Raoul or what has Raoul taught you or whatever? And honestly, I think Raoul has, has made me more assertive and uh, he's made me, um, I guess, something that doesn't feel right. Or if, if I feel like, like if, if it affects me or affects someone else, I will try to go deal with it, like, which is not something that I was normally inclined to do before I played Raoul. Um, yeah, I, I mean, who likes confrontation? I hate it. And I just want to, um, I've always been a people pleaser, but um, I'm realizing that that's less important as Raoul. Um, you can't please everybody. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I think it's about just um, speaking up for what's right. And um, so yeah, so thank you, Raoul. <laughs> Uh, what is your favorite food? Oh my goodness. Um, so many things. Uh, the one thing I do crave, uh, when I'm out of the country or, or not home is, um, is a good old Kansas steak. We're having it this weekend. My dad makes it on the grill. Um, barbecue is something that Kansas city is, is well known for. And that is definitely something that I have already had. That was actually, I think someone asked me too, that was my first meal when I got to the U.S. was, um, was burnt ends and uh, barbecue baked beans and corn. Um, so that was definitely a welcome to Kansas City kind of moment. Um, let's see. Um, but yeah, a, a nice juicy burger I always crave. I could always eat pizza. I know I sound so basic, but um, I like food in general. I love um, like a good salmon. We had some salmon last night. Um, and then I love being in new countries and trying their foods. So, um, oh, people were asking me what my favorite Korean food was, um, or is. I love bibimbap. Um, it's funny. I couldn't find it as much as I wanted to in Korea. Like I would go out and look for, for bibimbap. And I was often relying like on the pictures outside. And so I wouldn't see it a lot. And so, um, Often, I think if I asked, they'd be like, oh, we, ha we do have that. But um, I, when I'm performing, I can't have spicy things because I've got acid reflux. So um, so a lot of the dishes, and I love kimchi, but it's a little spicy. Um, so there's a lot of things uh, that have a lot of like red paste. That, like, everything that's like red is basically like not good for me. It means it's got tomatoes in it and blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of, of, um, of Korean dishes that I would not eat on a show day. Um... Let's see, what's your day off routine? Um, I think going back to what I was saying before about self-preservation, like um, when we were in other cities before COVID, um, I would make the most out of every day off. It's like, this is a chance to see this country, this city. And so I would, um, I would make sure that I, oh, mask for life guys. Um, yeah, I, I would make sure that I made the most out of each day off and um, not try to sleep through it and whatever. But um, but yeah, so in Korea, I would um, wake up and be like, how do I feel? Is my body just 
drained? Um, or do I have some energy to do something? And so then I would kind of go to my list of, uh, of things to do in that city. And then I would start checking them off if I had some energy. Um, occasionally it might be one of those days where you just go out for food and then come back and watch a movie. But, um, a lot of times, um, like one of my favorite things I did right before I left was going on a night hike up into the mountains behind the palace, behind our hotel. I would see for months, um, the, the, how the, um, the wall, around around Seoul would be lit at night. And I was like, oh, I so want to do that. And especially, well, I mean, it was monsoon season too. So like it was always raining, but um, I found, an, and then also it was really hot. So I was like, okay, well maybe during the day isn't probably the best time to go hiking up a mountain. But there was one evening where I was like, it's not too hot. It's not raining. I'm going to go for this hike. So um, it was amazing. I sweat my ass off, but getting up to the top and seeing the amazing view being up among this historic wall it was incredible. And um, so, yeah, it's like a mixture of um, my days off, like doing all like the historic stuff, like what makes a city famous, um, going out for a nice meal, um, it, just walking around a new neighborhood is what I like to do too, just sort of exploring. And I think one of the good things that about me traveling is that I, um, I feel like I, I distrust my gut. And so like, I'll be walking down a street and I'll be like, this looks like, and you come to a turning point and you're like, I could go left or right. And I'm like, right looks kind of cool. And I'm like, my gut will be like, go right. And then you like, then I find that in the past I have stumbled upon like a festival or like some amazing restaurant or store or, um, or I'll meet somebody or something. It's like, it's been, I, yeah, it's a good lesson to like, trust your gut. Like if the, take a turn for no reason other than just, it, it seems like a good, a good, uh, Good way to, to go. Um, oh, do I like mint chocolate? Yes, I love mint chocolate. Um, yeah, there's these um, chocolates that I grew up when I grew up in England, and because um, my mom's British and her family and um, and uh, these after eight mints were um, definitely something that I looked forward to as a kid. They come out. I th actually, I think I first had them at my grandpa's house in Wales, and. Um, they would come out after dinner in these little tiny sleeves and they, they were just so gentlemanly looking um, with a clock on it. It says after eight, definitely recommend those. Although I had a pack of them, I found them in Singapore and um, I would store them above uh, my dressing area. There was a shelf and I guess the, there was heat from the, the lights. And so I found uh, that one day, like all my lozenges and all my after eights had like melted together. <laughs> I was like, no. So anyway, yeah, definitely love mint and chocolate. Great combo. Um, do I remember the very first musical I watched? Yes. Um, I think I was three years old and my parents brought me into London to see Starlight Express. And uh, I think I was pretty much hooked. Um, my parents joke that uh, I... Oh gosh, we're getting close to the end of time. My parents joke that um, I was I had announced that I was desperate to go to the toilet and during the middle of the show and um but they're like we're gonna go take you to the toilet and i refused i just like held on to myself and <laughs> made sure i i saw every minute so i think i think there was like an inkling that i was gonna at least be interested in theater um i should i should bring these out you guys um i had to um ship three boxes home because of the most amazing presents i got from you guys um here's one of my friends hello and then here's another one Got all these rouse. I'll try to fix his hair. Put some. I'll put a little product in. But yeah. Hey. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen. This came to uh, this Funko Pop of Rao. This arrived in um, in Tel Aviv. So cool. Whoa. Oh, do I miss the stage? Oh yes. Oh, I definitely do. Um, I will say, like having done six months straight of, of six show, or of eight shows a week was, um, was definitely trying and especially during COVID. So it, it is nice to have a break every once in a while, but I can't wait to get back. Um, yes. Um, let's, let's see. Do we have time for a couple more? Um, oh, do I plan to release an album? I'm definitely thinking about it. Um, I have started to brainstorm and I think it would be cool. Um, oh, okay. Advice for kids, um, training to be in, in musicals. Um, just keep doing it and, um, do, 
do what you love. Um, like, yeah, I don't know. I, I just would, um, say to, um, gosh, this is hard. Um, like, don't let, like, if you love it, don't let someone take that away from you. There's so many people who, um, in my past, actually, who have, like, haven't been the most encouraging. And I feel like if you know deep in your gut that you want to do it, just keep doing it. And, um, and yeah, you, and you can't go wrong. And I guess my advice, like, in playing roles, and um, I think something that I wish I had done sooner is that um, just bring as much of you to your song, bring as much of you to your monologue, to your scene, because that's, that's what's going to make the most interesting version of the role or the character you're playing. So, um, yeah, I'd, I would just be, um, my, yeah, my gut is like, just keep doing it, love it, um, try not to let people discourage you, and, um, yeah, I think, just keep doing it, um, oh, and bring yourself to the role. Oh, God, there's only oh 48 seconds left. Life is great back home. I'm gonna miss, most of all, you guys in Korea. So what are you gonna miss about Korea? Um, how do you get into character? Um, oh gosh, you guys, we're gonna have to do this again. Um, all my best to you. Um, um, all my best. And, um, I hope you guys remain sane as possible during this crazy time. And, um, yeah, I guess just what I was maybe suggesting earlier, like get out, get some fresh air, enjoy, connect with your friends and family and, um, and use this time to dig inside yourself and um, maybe we'll learn something from this experience. All my best, you guys.